Right, so this video is going to be a little bit different to the other videos I usually have on this channel. Recently, I visited London Media Lounge in their studios in London, no less, and they interviewed me for their podcast. I'll put a link in the description below to the full video, but what we're going to have here is some highlights for you to sit back and enjoy if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about yours truly and the work that we do at CEO Entrepreneur and why we're so passionate about really helping small business owners grow their businesses the right way without losing their sanity, then listen on. But one thing I need to say is my headphones just kept slipping off every single time. They kept slipping off. I kept trying to adjust them. I made them the smallest size possible. I keep telling people I do not have a big head. Nobody will believe me. This is proof. Let's go. Hit it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another London Media Lounge podcast. And today we have a great guest, Mr. CEO Entrepreneur himself. I need to hear your story, man. Your story is incredible and I want people to hear it. So I'm going to give you the floor to go on from the beginning. Don't miss a detail. From the beginning. <laughs> right. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you when I was born, but anyway, uh, okay. <laughs> let's fast forward. Okay, I, I started off actually as a... Um, um, a lecturer, professor at university. Yep. Um, I had an engineering background. I got a PhD actually from just up the road here. Let's uh, go, Brunel uh, University. Brunel University, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, uh, and I was lecturing at King's College in London. Um, I was always passionate about education and I thought that we kind of lost our way. Education, what it is now, we've moved on and it's built back in the Industrial Revolution. Yes. So it's made for factory workers and people to clock in and clock out. And I saw that whilst I was sort of like in at King's and I decided to leave because I wanted to actually try and fix education yes. and it wasn't being fixed from inside. Right. So I moved into government um, and um, I went into to the UAE um, and I was working there on a national productivity fund where mm -hmm. we were funding small, medium, large businesses of all size. It was a $2 billion fund, which I sort of started and, and, and helped sort of grow. So we were funding businesses and we got to see what were the best practices, what the worst, you know, what to do, what not to do in yeah, all yeah. sorts of businesses. I also had several businesses on the side. Some of them were seven figure businesses. Some of them weren't. Um, some of them were successful. Some of them weren't. Yeah. Um, and in the end, I decided to, I, I thought that even in Ed, in government, I couldn't fix it because it was basically still from the, the sort of the large corporate um, organizations where right. they were saying, this is what we want people to graduate into. Yeah. So that was what was dictating the education system. That's crazy no, it's to crazy, hear. isn't That's it? Crazy so, yeah. To hear, yeah. so people are being basically taught to, 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 to follow, not to yeah, lead, not yeah, to take risk. Much. Yeah. yeah. And I decided um, I was earning a ridiculously high salary middle six figure salary. Let's um, go. Seriously, it was just, <laughs> and I walked away. I'd invested in a company. I had invested in se several companies myself. Mm. And I'd invested in a company that I saw a potential in. And it was just four people. It was in the space of digital health. Mm -hmm. I'm an engineer by background. And it was basically, a, uh, I said, this is really promising. Let's yeah. go in. So I moved in actually from four, we went down to two people and then we built it. Mm -hmm. Within 18 months, we'd built it to a hundred million dollar company. Um, and I was living an amazing lifestyle. There's a butt that's coming. Just, yeah. just there's a big butt <laughs> that's coming. Um, so, so it was like the amazing lifestyle. I had an amazing sort of house, swimming pool, Ferraris. Uh, it was. I had everything, and it yeah, was. It yeah. was. Life was good. Yeah. And then, thirty days, everything went belly up. Seriously, it wow. just. Um, I came back from the US. My house had flooded. Um, okay. And that's just the starting point. And basically the top floor had actually flooded onto the bottom floor. It had destroyed basically the, the, the floor and the furniture. Everything was gone. Right. Um, and that was just the signs of things to come. We had delivered um, an eight figure project to a very strong client in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say who it was. And um, after we delivered that three days later, they came back to us and they said, we've changed our administration and we're not honoring any past contracts. And we had promised a lot of subcontractors. We had paid a lot of money. We had actually grown now where we were three branches across the world in the US and the UK and in Dubai. And we were just absolutely devastated because we'd gone all in into this yeah. project. Um, and over there in, in Dubai, if you sign post-dated checks, that's how people do business. You, mm -hmm. you sort of promise your subcontractors that we're going to pay you once we get paid. We weren't paid. We couldn't pay them. Yeah. So um, I ended up having to fire every single person inside the business. Um, I then, um, basically my business partner who was flying back to the UK, his wife was giving birth to their third uh, baby. Mm. And he got arrested at the airport and he basically he called me up in the middle of the night and he said, come 
try and bail me out. I'm, yeah. I'm, I've been taken to prison. <laughs> and um, he basically, I, I went there and it was, he, a lot of our subcontractors had filed cases against him. Right. He was the one who'd signed the contract. So he was personally liable. Not even, even if you're a limited company, you're personally liable to the checks you sign. Yeah. So um, I ended up having to sell absolutely everything I had. He couldn't, he didn't have the sort of the, the funds. I got my parents in the UK to remortgage their property out of retirement. Oh man, and that must have been hard. Seriously, I yeah. mean, and, and, then, and then basically we, I went from somebody who was incredibly successful to having two million pounds personally in debt, out of pocket. Wow. Um, and I, literally everything that could go wrong at that point, it was going wrong. I had one person, I think two people were left in the business and we thought maybe we can try and sort of rescue this at some point. Yeah. And, um, we couldn't. Um, I, I had my last car, which I was going to sell. It was a it was a, it was a Mercedes um, mm. S sixty five AMG, right. um, and I was going to sell this so that I can afford paying the salaries for the the last remaining employees that we had in the business, so that we can keep it afloat. Mm. And um, as I went to to the to the dealer to actually sell the car, the car actually blew up in front of our face in the engine. It just went on fire. Um, it had been serviced and they had forgotten to connect a hose, so it overheated and it just literally oh went on fire in front God. of the in front of the dealer. So I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff. It sounds up. like spiritual. Seriously, it sounds like it there's some paranormal activities <laughs> going on here. It was just everything that was possibly going wrong. It was going wrong, and, and wow. we just could. I, I just wasn't getting a break. In the end, I had to sit there and actually break my friends after I'd bailed him out of prison right. he had to break through his son's piggy bank so we were actually collecting wow. coins to see how we could afford to survive on food over the coming days anyway I got him out of the country um, yeah. we negotiated um, a, a deal with the subcontractors and we they dropped the cases and we got him out of the country which was yeah. um, great I came back to the UK and I was just my brain was just in auto cruise yeah um, so it just went on autopilot I started up another company uh, which was another tech company. We got funded. We got an innovation award, and I and I gave a TEDx talk, and I'd sort of settled my debts, which is great. Yes. You say that's great, but it wasn't. I was still absolutely miserable because I had failed, and I still couldn't get over the fact that not only had I failed, but I had let a lot of people down. Yeah. Um, a lot of these people that had relied on me, they'd moved their lives to Dubai, to other places, so that they can actually work in this business and. I just had to let them go. And yeah. um, there were still people that we owed money to that we couldn't pay all the amounts. People were calling me a thief, um, yeah. you know, and it was just one of those things where I became a hermit and I just hid away. Um, so, yeah. So how was that mentally, man? How I was think I mentally? was suffering from PTSD. I mean, there's n I, I, it's, it wasn't sort of officially diagnosed, but yeah. I was waking up every single morning with extreme panic. Uh, just every oh morning I would get up God. in bed, open my eyes and I'd have this horrible feeling. Um, and I decided um, I wasn't going to take it anymore because yeah. I, I went and I spoke to a few people. Um, if, if things are going wrong, speak to people that you really trust because they can give you most people will actually give you um, wrong information and advice. They'll tell you, oh, go get a job. Oh, go do this, go do this, yeah. you know, move on with your life. Yeah. But I went and I spoke to this person and he was having a conversation with me and he was basically saying, so why, you know, what's wrong? You know, why are you still going through this? Mm -hmm. This has been several years now. Um, and I said, well, I feel guilty about these people. I was responsible. And um, he said, um, well, how is that person that you felt guilty for? And I said, well, actually, he's okay. And he said, well, how's that person? I said, well, she's okay. Yeah. And he said, well, how is your business partner who actually was in prison and yeah, yeah. got out? And, and I said, well, he's not great, but he's okay. He's moved yeah. back to the UK. He's with his family. Everything's fine. So he said, so what's your problem? <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so it was just like, oh, yeah, you've got a point. Yeah. And I think it was just inside my head that I had not failed at that level before. Yeah. And we have been treated in this society to grow up and fear failure you can't fail otherwise yeah. you'll get you fired from your job you can't fail you can't fail at school you can't fail in your job you mm -hmm. can't do this and i just sat down and i thought about it and i said let me go back and rewrite my narrative so i just went back and i said right actually we could have done things better we could right. have actually put some safety nets in place yeah because i wanted to ask you about like how could they go back after three days that we're not going to honor any con previous contracts they like were too strong for you to even take to court so, oh yeah, so, that, so, that scale, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, fail. it's an eight-figure project, and and that was a, a, a sort of a drop in, in in the ocean for them. Yeah. Um. So so we literally could not take them to court. Uh, we would have lost even more and not got anywhere. Wow. 
Wow. So we had to sort of like, you know, put our tails between our legs and yeah. come back and just accept what it is, it is what it is. So yeah. um, I ended up saying, okay, actually, so this company that I was running, which was um, another uh, digital health company, which was doing really well, I, I decided to let that go, hand it over to other people. And um, I started CEO Entrepreneur because at the time I was trying to grow my business. Yeah. Um, I was looking for coaches or people to give me advice and I would hire coaches. I, I would hire even people from Tony Robbins team or, or whoever. And hardly any of them had actually run a business um, in their lives except for a coaching company or they become sort of marketing gurus and all they knew was marketing, but actually understanding how to grow a business and actually when businesses go wrong and when, you know, what to do, but what not to do, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't find anyone. They were few and far between, um, especially to the scale of business that I'd grown, grown it to. Right. Um, and I would keep asking certain coaches, what do you think I should do? And they would turn back and say, what do you think you should do? You know, this is <laughs> <laughs> wow, and amazing I'd like, advice. You know, and I'd be like, I, I'm asking you, and they say, yeah. yeah, but this is about you know you getting clarity and getting your own reflection. What do you think you should do? I'd be like, damn it, tell me, I don't yeah. know. So I decided to start CEO Entrepreneur because I thought you know this is this should be a business for business owners by business owners right. who really sort of understand how what it takes to succeed in business which yeah. we have done successfully but also just as importantly actually even more importantly what it takes to fail and what not to do mm. and how not to do them so that we you, you know we can give shortcuts to people to actually not pay these expensive mistakes yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's when i started ceo entrepreneur and um it's been an, an amazing ride since. Obviously, the business itself is to help other businesses get through challenges and not to make the mistakes. But what made you decide to put it on YouTube and to go the video route? So um, the video route was, was actually a fundamental part of our strategy. I mean, we, we wanted to, first of all, make, um, like you said, help small business owners become the CEO of their own businesses, right. understand how to run a business. Yes. Um, and the way that we looked at a lot of the platforms out there, we we knew that video is is the thing to do at the moment. It, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's the quickest way for you to be able to get your message across mm -hmm. in a way where we also wanted to make it educational, but also entertaining. Yes. We wanted to make it like a fun thing to do so people can actually watch and still be entertained and still get a lot of value out of it. Yeah. Um, and that would represent our brand because the brand that we wanted to do, it's about being working on a personalized level. We wanna work and sort of help every single entrepreneur you know, we've got a big vision. Yeah, so yeah, every yeah. single entrepreneur that, you know, in the world who can actually wants to run and grow a business, they have different um, sort of like visions. They yeah. have different needs. They Their lifestyle, that what they want out of a business, is no two businesses are going to be alike yeah, and no yeah, yeah. two business owners are going to be alike. And we said, well, actually, we, what we want to do is we want to create this personalized um, route for people to understand if you want to run a business in certain ways, this is how you do it. And the best way that we thought this was going to work was through video. It helps us, first of all, say who we are, what mm -hmm. we stand for, what we don't stand for. Mm -hmm. um, it helps the exposure from a sort of uh, a branding perspective and a positioning perspective of who we are in the market, what we've actually done in the past. And people can get to see that actually we know what we're talking about, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but, but, but I think that it also helps in a way. So it's interesting because actually we, when we started off um, um, the YouTube channel, CEO Entrepreneur, we thought that it would take about three to five years before we could actually see it really monetize in, in a way where it would actually attract a lot of traffic for us in terms of clients and so on and so forth. We thought that the first one to two years, potentially three years, it would be a slow struggle and it would be basically something that we would grow in parallel with what we were doing as a business, you know, elsewhere mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. in what we were doing. But actually that surprised us. What surprised us was that the reaction and the traction that we got from people watching these videos has already generated for us actually multiple ROI and what we've put into editing and what we've put into, and we've hired, we hired out from day one because we wanted to position it as a certain sort of position in terms of the brand. Um, we, we wanted to make sure that we were presenting our brand in the way that we felt was appropriate. Right. Um, and, and again, you, um, video is one of the, you know, the most amazing ways to do that because Absolutely. you really can, can sort of con connect with people and they can really begin to understand who you are. What we found that not only is it great for exposure and positioning and branding, but it's also 
actually a money making um, exercise, yeah. which 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 we didn't expect so yeah. soon and so early. So if you are actually thinking about video, it is definitely the thing to do. It's not too late to do it. We started it just last year during the pandemic, um, and already we're seeing the fruits of it. So from a from a business perspective as yeah. well. Back to that point that you said, where um, people say, "Oh, my market is saturated and whatnot." Let me tell you something. Your market could be saturated, but there is not another you out there. A lot of people don't mistake the fact that video is just not you're giving tips and whatnot. No, so people get attracted to your personality, your style, your voice, your energy, and they want to work with you. A lot of people do not understand that. It's like, there is not another you out there. I've done your quiz. Yeah. When we first kind of got in touch on LinkedIn, I've done your quiz. And one of the main thing that was missing out, that was that kind of the quiz um, pointed out is that we were lacking purpose. Mm -hmm. So... Let's talk about purpose and when you work in anything in life, to be honest, purpose is very important. So how does one go about finding the, especially when it comes to business, because a lot of people go into business, I want to be financially free. I don't want a boss. I want to be rich, blah, blah, blah. But that's not an enough, a good enough purpose because once you make a little bit of money, it's going to be hard to kind of wake up feeling the same motivation that you had day one. So how do you, how do you go about fixing that? So that's a really good question, and it's not one that you can sort of answer in five minutes. But yeah. um, t to start with, purpose is really, really important and very underestimated in the really small businesses. Mm. Um, once you get beyond, the, you know, the medium size, the large size businesses, you'll see they have mission, vision, yeah. purpose, strategy, and a lot of small business owners say, "Well, we we don't have time for that." But actually, that is where you should be starting when you're looking at your business because. Right. That's what's going to dictate everything. Why are you doing what you're doing? Mm. Um, is it and, and what is your end game? Right. Because I think that that's really important because there are so many different potential outcomes. Are you building a business so you can be financially free? But then what does that mean? Does that mean that you're not going to be in it in 10 years or 20 years time? Or does that mean you're going to be handing it over to family? Are you going to get it sold? Are you going to, you know, um, have investors coming, mm. uh, IPO, whatever? You know, there are so many different options and opportunities in terms of what you're going to do. So you need to basically sit there and say to yourself, okay, so what's my end game? And what's yeah. the end game for my business? And, and, and they are two actually very different things. Yeah. Because your end game for your business is is not sort of tied directly to what the business does after you leave that business because if you yeah. sell it it carries on doing what it needs to do and being able to sit down and sit down and basically say to yourself right okay why am i doing this yeah what's the point yeah how so, often how, how often do you do you have to remind yourself of that obviously you know you understand like the day-to-day -day activity here i come in here and i'm like oh, okay I need to do this, 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 then that. I, if I, if it wasn't for my skill, I like to write stuff yeah. down. I have a list. Yeah. If I don't get those things done, uh, the next day is going to be even more hectic. So how often do you have to sit down with yourself and be like, okay, my vision is to make sure I get deals in this industry. All right. So, you know? so, so, so first of all, your business mission and, and vision and purpose will dictate how you build your strategy for your business. Mm. So it's not something that you need to necessarily visit every single day or every month or every year. Mm -hmm. It's something that you sit down right to the beginning of your business and it will be updated over time, maybe right. every three years when you're re sort of looking at your strategy, um, um, uh, maybe every year as a review, um, but then a fundamental sort of change comes every three years or so. Yeah. So what you do is you sit down and you say, right, what is my purpose what is my end game mm -hmm. why am i doing this mm -hmm. what is the reason is there you know is it for us for example is that we believe that you know education is rubbish at the moment and we want to make sure that entrepreneurs around the world get the right kind of guidance right. and we believe that every single entrepreneur has a different purpose for their business yes. so that what we're going to offer them is not generic rubbish we're yeah. going to offer them a personalized journey for everyone no matter how how much we scale the business so even as we're doing group programs like the fire starter program it's still a very personalized journey even within that sort of thing right. every single successful business that has grown they grew up remember even apple grew out of a garage yeah so everyone starts from zero every single successful business has grown has grown because they had a strong mission yeah. and a strong vision and they built this strategy around that so that's what you need to be asking yourself so let me ask you this question yes sir what what is it that you want to achieve in the next 10 years give me give me a sort of a okay so uh let me give you a quick uh, kind of like uh you were thinking about this you know um kind of London Media Lounge kind of is tying up everything that I'm doing, you know, kind of like who I am and, 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 and what I believe in through the business. 
right? So I'm trying to kind of do that. I'm trying to get, like I said, we're trying to get contracts with schools and mm. whatnot. So I really want to go down that route because I really feel terrible <laughs> when I'm reaching to people just to pay bills. Yeah. You know, because I, I feel fake and I feel like a hypocrite and I do not want to feel that yeah. way. So it has to be about the person for me to engage kind of. So I don't know if I answered the question, but that's the best I can do right now. I think now. there's a lot of nuggets in there and I think it needs to be sort of distilled. And, right. and, and, and But I see, I hear, I'm hearing a lot of themes. I'm hearing this theme of, uh, of education, but also yeah. finding the right people and being able to amplify their, their voice and their yeah. brand yeah. F- through video. Yeah. Um, and, and if that's the case, then that's still a very, very noble purpose. And it's something that you then need to sit down and say, all right, okay, so what's my vision? Mm-hmm. What's the mission? Mm-hmm. What do we need to achieve? Mm-hmm. How do we tie this together and actually formulate a company that gets us to achieve that? What's right. out there as well in terms of other companies right. and how are we going to differentiate ourselves from that? Right, right. And then that will then dictate how you how you start expanding, whether you're expanding the editing side, whether you're expanding the studio side, mm-hmm. whether you're expanding the offers in terms of what you're doing, whether it's actually how you're going to vet these people to say, I don't want rubbish out there. Are yeah. you going to get people to apply? So there are a whole bunch of things, and I'm not saying that you should, but but what I'm saying is that that then dictates everything that you do inside your business, and it will give you a coherent path and a direction inside your business where it's focused and it's really, really sort of like targeted and sort of laser beam. And then once you focus and you understand what you need to do, then it's about optimizing that. It's yeah. about going through and saying, right, okay, let me simplify. Let me optimize. Yeah. That didn't work. Okay, let me try a different thing. That worked. Okay, how do I? And then it's about measuring, tracking, measuring, optimizing, optimizing. And that's, if you want the secret of actually any successful business, that is that you, do, you don't need anything else. You don't even need to come and buy our course <laughs> or anything <laughs> like that. That is your secret. Now, I mean, obviously there's there's a lot more to of it course, than that. Of course, of course. But what I'm trying to say is that a lot of people sit there and try and say, you know, what's the secret of growing a business? And this guy, you know, did this and this guy did that. And and, and they were overnight successes. Uh, they're probably in 20 years in the making. You know, you, you there's a lot of things that happen in place um, in any successful business that's sustainably successful because you could have an overnight success that happens and then it just fizzles out a yeah. year later yeah. because they can't like you know look at their cash flow and then they or their strategy is different or they try different things and they all kind of goes down so when you're starting to look at successful businesses that are sustainably successful and they c- carry on through the years and through the decades that's what they do yeah. that's all they do they, know they exactly sit there and they build systems around the strategy around their mission and purpose and actually sit there and optimize those systems and yeah. make them consistent and optimized that's it Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for the advice. Obviously, yeah. I want to follow up with so many questions, but I know we're limited on no, time. I know. But I do want to set up our, hopefully our next podcast that we're going to do by asking you this question. Right. Please briefly, what, how are you looking at education right now? Like we spoke about it briefly, but what you've been a professor yeah, at, at a King's, King's College. Yeah. And, and you, you taught, you were a lecturer. What's what's the what's the problem? And how, like, what's the problem, man? Like what's going on? So the, the problem I, I think is that We've got lost in terms of our purpose yeah. for what the education system is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it was born from the industrial revolution, the one that we have today, mm-hmm. and that was basically there to clock in, you know, and clock out factory yeah, workers. Yeah. And our world has moved beyond that. We are now, like you can see, we've got the sort of the one-person solopreneur businesses that are content creators and things like that, and how you market your message and the internet has changed. And you've got this education system that's sitting there trying to tell you to fear failure. You know, don't fail mm. because if you fail, you fail your exam. Mm. You can't get into a good job. If you go to your job, you, you know, don't fail. Yeah. And actually the world is now all about taking these calculated risks. And if you're going to be trained and educated to to survive within this new world that we've got, even past the pandemic, um, it's about making sure that you are able to take the right risks at a calculated measure and being able to lead and being able to actually show your voice whether it's through video whether it's through other content creation or whether it's just even as a service-based business or or you know a brick and mortar business you still need to understand what to do and how to take these risks and be able to do that and what we're trying to do at ceo entrepreneur when we're looking at education is making sure that we're not only telling people how to succeed but we're telling people how to fail and how to embrace failure because every business that's actually going to succeed is going to have to go through a several series of mini failures to actually get to the point that you're actually doing. But what do you do and how do you actually um, put a contingency plan in place where actually when you do fail, you have a backup plan from day one. So you're saying, right, I'm going to do this, but if it doesn't work, then I'm going to try this and it's acceptable. 
um, and, and being able to do that and making sure that we're actually providing a personalized service in the same way that customization has happened in sort of cars and other things and everything that you're doing. Everyone learns in a different way and we're yeah. still giving the same information to people in a classroom and we're expecting everyone to absorb that information in the same way. Yeah. And yep. we're doing some and we're actually starting just with entrepreneurs at the moment yeah. where we're saying, hey, if you're a service based business or a product based business, your finance and cash flow is going to be completely different because you're going to need to look at inventory here where you don't in a service based business. Mm -hmm. So actually, we're beginning to modify even the course material that we're giving so that it's tailored to the right person. And then you start looking at sort of algorithms like what Facebook and YouTube are doing when they're presenting those videos for you because they're learning who you are and you've got these machine learning that's actually saying, right, this is who this is what they're interested in. Yeah. We want to do that for education. Thank we you. have arrived to the last part of the show, which is the quick fire round. So oh. please help yourself to the ball right in front of you. There are so many different questions. You can choose uh, three questions to answer. And then we would like you to keep uh, to leave your mark here by uh, answering, <laughs> by uh, asking a question. So go ahead. What superpower would you like to have? <laughs> oh dear. I think being able to read people's minds. Ooh, <laughs> that's a very interesting one. Yeah. Why is that? Because you want to close every deal uh, you go into. Not about closing. It's about being able to um, serve people better, you know, oh, in that I way. See. Because if we're, we've just been talking about a personalized service, yeah. I want to be able to understand what you want out of your life and how can I serve you better? Oh, that's a that very way. noble way. Because yeah. I was thinking the evil way. I want to control this person. Yeah, let's do that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, second question. Second question. What is the future of education? Oh, wow. We just, we, just, we just answered that. So you can pick another one, actually. No, no, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Number three is, what's your favorite restaurant or takeout? Oh, yes. Um, I love sushi. Not 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 like the yo sushis. and, and yeah. so I like the really smaller ones where they're a family and they yeah. actually know how to do proper sushi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. Because yeah. Yeah. when you go to Japan, it's completely different. Is it? Yeah. Uh, is it different taste? N not when you go to the to the smaller ones, yeah. um, the the family ones that yeah. are sort of in in, in in here in London and, and other cities. Um, they're very similar, but actually the, the yo sushis and the other things that it, it it's become a lot more sort of westernized yeah a little bit. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll definitely japan is definitely one of my uh, spots to visit very Same. soon but yes thank you so much dr You're shaheen welcome. it's it's been amazing talking to you and Likewise. i look forward to our next uh, discussion ladies and gentlemen dr tammy shaheen